Thank you very much, everyone. All right. So moving straight on to the next panel, because we are running out of time. Um, the next panel will be talking about whether OTT is largely a catch-up medium or a, a place to watch original premium content. So is it a, a catch-up medium or a primary medium of choice? That is the next panel, and are we all, are we all set to go? All right, so introducing the last panel of the day, thank you all for being so patient. Um, the moderator for the next panel is the founder and CEO of What Consult, Mr. Rajiv Tingra. Also on the panel, we have uh, Akash D. Batra, Senior Vice President and Head of Marketing, DBS Bank, Ashish Kazanshi, Managing Partner, Enormous Brands, Ashok Cheryan, Head Marketing and Revenue of Laws Entertainment, Manish Kumar, Co-Founder and CEO, Digi Osmosis, Pinakin Thakkar, CEO, Nirvana Digital, Subha Srinivasan Ayer, Head, Media Services, Godrej Consumer Products. Requesting the panel to please uh, make their way towards the stage. And ladies and gentlemen, can we hear a round of applause for the panel as they make their way to the stage? All right, ladies and gentlemen, please do note down your questions. If you do have any, they will be addressed at the end of the panel. With that, let's begin this 30-minute panel as soon as possible. And I hand it over to Mr. Rajiv. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everyone. We, have a, we are waiting for one more panelist to arrive. Uh, that's Akash Deep from DBS. Uh, requesting uh, Akash Deep to please make his way to uh, the stage. I think we'll be waiting just for a couple of minutes right here. Yes. All right. Thanks. Uh, so we have a very exciting panel here. We have uh, brand marketers uh, who represent very large brands who both spend on television and digital in, in significant, uh, you know, uh, Ways. And we have people who create content on the panel. We have people who distribute content on the pa panel. We have creative agency representation, digital agency representation. I couldn't think of a more well-rounded uh, panel uh, to discuss this topic. So let's dive right into it. And you know, I'm 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 gonna start with Shubha. You uh, first. Uh, you know. OTT, how, how do you as a brand marketer, where does OTT fit in into your uh, overall, how do you look at the content, where do you see your, the evolution of OTT currently uh, in the way it is positioned, uh, both as a viewer, consumer, and as a brand marketer? Okay. Uh, thanks for the question, Raji. Very interesting question. and. Uh... Uh, just two perspectives. The first question uh, I'll answer in the form of someone who's targeting OTT as a media planner point of view. Uh, most important to remember, and here is what I would really call out, that never mix up what you're doing as a viewer, as an individual viewer versus an OTT targeter. Uh, both the viewers are very different. I love OTTs, certainly. As a viewer, I consume a lot. When it comes to targeting, this is one of the most exciting phases for us as marketers because OTT offers a very great level of targeting. It has great level of segmentation and it's at a phase where there is a lot of excitement in terms of the speed at which this whole scenario is exploding. Number of OTTs, uh, the varied amount of content that's available, that's a complete delight both for customers as well as marketers and businesses alike. Questions that we need to just sort of uh, delve deeper into is 
where is the space going to be in the next couple of years what is what according to you is going to happen when a lot of regulations that we know uh, have come into play in the television scenario what if they came into play and but, but as on today is it a good to have or a must have yeah, good to have yes not Answer must have as yet uh, in your have, plans not must have yeah. because if you look at our kind of business and brands where segmentation actually our segmentation is not uh, in the sense we target mass numbers so definitely a good place to be in for our brands but not a must have would digital video be a must have yes must have so yes. youtube definitely becomes a must yes, have in, in today's but ott yeah. in specific is not a must have in your plans today to and an extent brand. for some brands the answer is yes yeah the answer is no if it is all brands and and what what primary reason uh, and i'm going to pull you in akash deep on mm -hmm. on this question to debate what primary reason do you think it's it's good to have uh, and you know while tv i would believe as a must have mm -hmm. in most yeah. brand plans that so you TV have so tv obviously for the sheer uh, numbers and uh, the kind of uh, i'll call it out third party monitoring mm -hmm. and uh, if you ask me for ott specifically great content great level of uh, genres uh, crazy evolution in terms of options available for a marketer uh, but lack of scale lack of scale and uh, we still need far deeper metrics you mean lack of knowledge of type of audience absolutely so you don't know who's watching mm, to an extent no okay very interesting akash deep your thoughts all right uh, i see it from two perspectives right one let me just comment on the first point about where do i see it today and uh, give you a sense about where i think it's going to go right uh, from today's perspective ott which is minus of youtube uh, is a an active plan a must have plan for at least how i've seen in my previous life and my current life uh, very clearly replacing what i say the long tail of of tv channels which uh, you know you get you know enough of reach for light tv light tv viewers and make sure you can reach them with your same messaging so that that's how i see it now um, uh, you know in uh, i've seen enough and more tools including uh, mort and is which allow us to track who's who's watching it and how they're using it that's on the part today but however right, you know I, i think uh, bringing a little bit more about my current life as well the challenge with ott continues to be that it's a fairly nascent stage about the uh you know about the opportunities that it actually provides to marketers like us right mm -hmm. so one of the things is i mean there's definitely no opportunity for you to drive full funnel in marketing right there's relatively uh, less retargeting opportunities there's absolutely no information about the consumer today or all you're doing is is targeting basis based on genre so therefore uh, you know the way i see it um, ott in my media plan continues to be bucketed under the tv way of planning and buying and not the digital way of planning and buying interesting very interesting uh i'd like to uh you know rope in at this moment uh people on the creative side and on the content side so uh you know i'd like to rope in ashok and i'd like to rope in uh ashish and get your views on uh, what is lacking in the ott space as far as content is concerned to make it more uh engaging exciting and relatable and making it more of a medium that more people log on and pay for or even watch advertising for like how they are forced to watch advertising for television so anyone I'll, you know we could start with you hello uh i i actually would take a slightly you know contrarian view i think it's super exciting i think uh in a way there were like big dams on the kind of things that uh people could do right so there is no censorship there's a lot of content which there were not very large numbers for the kind of uh horror shows ghoul for example uh mirzapur kind of uh yes. content so suddenly all dams are broken okay uh, whether it's dark content whether it's content which is much more niche uh there's no censorship there is uh, there are shows like uh sacred games which otherwise wouldn't have seen you know light of day whether it was television or uh, theaters all of that is happening also what's happening again because there is no censorship uh, what we see with a lot of uh, those that shall not be named 
Uh, there's a lot of content which is, you know, semi-porn and stuff, and it's getting numbers in millions and millions, right? So there is every single, at every single uh, kind of vertical or every single kind of genre, there is lots happening. The only thing right now, in my opinion, is it's still, you know, only a couple of years old. It's not existed for a long while. For it to get to a place where all of those market forces have come into play, uh, a lot of it will not be, you know, fueled forever on by investor dollars. It has to be funded by marketing dollars. So will the semi-pawn kind of content work or not work? We don't know. We used to have uh, Bindas, right, which had huge numbers, emotional atyachar, and so on and so forth. It never got any advertiser. So all of those market forces would have to come in and stabilize this whole thing. I think it's exciting right now for, uh, I mean, if you see only the kind of the, the content that's getting generated out there, uh, I think it's got a great long way to go, man. Yeah. Uh, coming to you, uh, you know, initially OTT was about catch up, but now originals are sort of, you know, you are, you are in the thick of that, of creation of these originals. Are they seeing the kind of uh, uptake from the audience, from what you hear, from what you're hearing from the various OTT players that you yourself deal with? Uh, what's, what's the status of original content, which in my view would actually differentiate OTT uh, viewing from TV viewing in a big way. Um, yeah, like you know, we're, we're discussing. It's absolutely an exciting time in the content space in India. Uh, like we say, we're a content studio from the Aditya Birla Group called Applause Entertainment, and we've done a bunch of things in the in the past year. And interestingly, the conversations we had with platforms say a year ago to what we are having today is seeing a marked change and development and growth and it simply means that all of them are also figuring things out there's no real written rule there's no logbook to follow in that sense and they're all learning stuff and we, everyone's trying to do interesting work so which is why you see the uh, like the dams broken on certain things coming out there as fresh new content there is the other questionable content but i think the middle of all this there are some great shows there are some great shows that are being created for an indian audience and uh, I think it's, that part is interesting. Just to give you a range of things we've done, we've done thrillers like Hostages, a show which is on Hotstar. We've done another show called Criminal Justice, very widely acclaimed, again on Hotstar. We've done a comedy on Prime Video called Mind the Malotras. We've done another comedy on um, uh, Hotstar called The Office, which is doing re really and, well. And all these shows are getting a second run? All of them yeah, are doing really well. We're going into season twos. So people are looking for content beyond television. They want to see it at their time, at uh, their convenience. And while we try to, you know, we are a big country, so you can't really second guess what content everyone's going to want. And you can't make one show which fits all. So we will have to make different kinds of shows, different genres, different, different themes, right from the obscure to the super niche to the super mass. And it will still, you know, find its audience because one size won't fit all, and as, as platforms, as creators, as uh, talent, artists figure their way around here, I'm sure we'll see more and more interesting content coming so out of a, this it's, place. A, it's in the early evolution curve as far as the yes, original the, content is yes, concerned. Yes, I would call it the early growth, wouldn't say nascent, because a whole bunch of shows have, are out here, and we are in the early growth and, and figuring things out as we go. Yeah, interesting. Manish, we, you know, prior to the panel, we were discussing about the broader uh, uh, you know, forces at play, you know, the whole geo fiber evolution and what it's doing as well as, uh, you know, the YouTube numbers which are massive and the, the challenge with the walled garden approach of the various OTT players. So would you want to talk about that? Because how all of that is actually causing uh, currently uh, there not being much of an advertising uh, uh, market for OTT. So as Ashok was speaking, yeah, it's Early days, if not nascent, and that's a very right word used because the numbers are already quite big. If you take a normal nation in Europe, the population of ODT in India is surely more than that, so we can't call it nascent. But yeah, it's uh, an extremely interesting stage where the process has just started. Firstly, if we look at numbers, if 80% of the entire audience base right now is male and 20% are women, it's very much like the way we used to speak about internet a couple of years back where it was 90-10, it became 80-20, it became 70-30 and actually consumption-wise is close to 65-35 today. 
So firstly, a huge important base for both content creators as well as advertisers is missing because if you have just 20% of women which is not reflective of the population itself, there is a huge change expected, that's one. The topic itself when we are talking of catch-up or its primary, we are basically talking more between originals and a lot of shows which is a repeat after television. Now if we take platforms like Woot and a Z5 which is from the house of a Z or a Colors, the catch-up is much higher. Whereas if we take platforms like Hotstar, the biggest consumption comes out of live sport. Now that's literally an opening platform because it has not even started. The third is the Amazons and the Netflix which are number three and respectively, respectively number five, a complete paid platform which are all more and more about originals and when we are talking about catch up it's more to do with movies where I decide that a Lion King which is that scale of movie where you want to enjoy the 3D and the IMAX, you go to a theater yet which becomes primary and there might be a lot of very good content movie which is not about the canvas and the VFX and the effects which is going to be more of a catch up kind of scenario. Coming to infrastructure as you were putting and the huge expected change and where the consumer is riding the wave right now and is at that maximum advantage. If we take a Geo user today, a lot of your Hotstar comes free with it or the way the entire price war is going and with a Netflix announcing a 199. Yeah. It's just practically the beginning and a hint of what can come which is going to be extremely unpredictable. The other piece, because we have brought so much of television, the definition itself is going to be very, very expectedly shattering because television for us is something that today we watch on something which is called monitor as one of our panelists was speaking before we came here. Now, do we treat a fire stick as television and a Tata Sky as something else? I don't know and as we spoke with a Geo announcing a whole setup box which is an Android TV meets DTH meets home Wi-Fi, the whole scenario itself can take a complete different spin. So it's going to be a wait and watch because so the environment is so changing. It's the blurring of lines between what we today technically term as OTT or the, you know, the DTH or the YouTube content, which are actually three separate silos would be accessible in what you, you were saying in, in 18 months in 50 million homes. That's right? the target. Even to add to that, the technicalities or the terminologies we are using today has actually changed because when we are even talking about catch up to a primary, we are already like somebody like me who lives the ODD platform as a market here, you already are talking the S word and the A word, which are completely different platforms when you see the content creator, the platform owners. Yes. So that's yes. already started. Very interesting. Your thoughts? Uh, and also from the standpoint of where YouTube fits in all of this, given your, you know, your experience, because that's the platform that's the biggest digital video platform in the country, right? And more often than not, it is almost taken for granted. So, you know, what's, what are your thoughts on what we just discussed? Well, I'm happy that YouTube is taken for granted. Today, if someone wants to look for a recipe, today if someone wants to look for any kind of information, like you said, it's taken for granted. It's become the second largest search engine, right? So you will search and you will go to YouTube. There's no denying the fact that the scale is massive, but keeping in mind connectivity, keeping in mind the, an advertiser standpoint, keeping in mind brand safety, YouTube is, itself is blurring the lines because now you have YouTube premium, right? So you can go ahead and have an ad-free experience. And I mean, you guys make so much content you get data, like hardcore data in terms of watch time and minutes and stuff like that. I'm not sure you guys do, but we, we, we get that. On, on YouTube, that's an advantage. So it's, you, we, we have to see where this goes. We have to see how brands, I mean, maybe, uh, you know, from an agency standpoint, from a digital agency standpoint, you've already done how not to skip six seconds. You've already done uh, modification to the communication itself. 
but now since the lines get blurry, let's see where this goes. And to add on what you all were discussing earlier, the screen size is what you call a monitor, what she calls a monitor. The screen size, now people are more flexible. They're not rigid to say, Ki bhai, I need to watch this show in my bedroom on, this full, on the full screen TV. They're ready to go ahead and watch it on their phone while taking a dump. Mm -hmm. it's, they, they, it's, it's become like that. Good quality content is always going to sell. These guys make great content. YouTube has originals. I mean, how many people in the room actually know that uh, when is the next Sacred Games uh, season coming out? Yeah. A show of hands. That's about yeah, yeah, 30, 40. Uh, there, you guys know. 14th August, 15th August. So it's the awareness toward what you like and where to find it quicker is going to change. The, the newer generation has, uh, has redefined the amount of time that they'll spend in front of a television. So, are we saying that, and this, this uh, question is to the entire panel, whoever, whoever wants to take it up, are we saying that we are seeing the slow death and maybe uh, uh, accelerated death of appointment viewing, whether anywhere, you know, it is on demand viewing that is going to be the future. At least that much can the panel agree on that appointment viewing, which used to be what television was, right, is going to die. Is it going to die? So uh, I, I have a... Sorry, uh, sorry. Let, yeah. So this is a very interesting thing. You are making people sample nectar, okay? Mm. And then you are saying, okay, go back and eat your original food. And then you are saying, will you go back to your regular food or nectar? My answer is a mix of both. Mm. The best part about OTTs is that it's actually made it possible for all of us to watch content on the go at whatever time I please. And a lot of times, I've actually corrected myself from trying to pause when I'm watching TV. And this is very interesting. And I've realized, oh, I can't do that. And then I go back and I, now this is pure behavior intervention. Very interesting. Once you habituated people to something that is at your beck and call, and this is a watch out for actually broadcasters television. Correct? Now, whether it comes in the form of regulating the amount of TV ads, don't quote me <laughs> or not. The point is how fast this is basically going to be a competition for content, better and better content. People are sampling better content. People are sampling it whenever they feel like. So definitely things are never going to be the same. But let's let me put it back to you, one small question mm -hmm. is, do you think beyond live sports, yeah. appointment TV viewing is going to decline? Let's say no. not die, but decline okay. Okay. massively in I, the next I five have, years. Okay, I'll answer this with pure data, because I love data. Sure. 1.5 hours of television has gone in the last two years to 1.7 hours. OTT or TV have not eaten into each other. OTT is 1.7 hours and print is 0.7 hours. Now magically we have added 1.7 hours, right? If I, the pie has grown larger and this is the most interesting part and my favorite part. I'll say that please let's have rationalization and pricing and we will know the actual number of people who want to only drink nectar. Very nice. Uh, let, let me just yeah. build this from a slightly different perspective, right? Uh, and we were discussing this, right? There are about uh, 200 million households which have TV, which is a penetration of about 60%, 60-65%. Now, with the geo phenomena, low cost Android phones, blah blah, all of that stuff, you know, most of the people who are actually getting onto the connected or the entertainment world are the guys who don't have TV in the first place, right? So they're kind of skipping that generation. So by definition, the rest of the 40%, I'm, I'm assuming not everyone has access to uh, devices yet, but when they come on, they would not even know what appointment viewing means, right? I mean, they don't even have the experience of doing that. So that, that's, a, you know, that's an important thing for us to keep in mind. You know, I think the, uh, the other important point for us to see is, 
is, you know, even if you refer to some of the Western markets, US is actually a great uh, market to refer to because, you know, uh, digital as a, uh, you know, as a, as a channel of choice actually happened much earlier than it did for us. Again, I know the scale is different and uh, so on and so forth, but, uh, you know, majority of even, so why would you want to watch eventually an appointment viewing, right? There are two reasons largely, right? One is sports, and again, sports is really big in the US. The other is news, right? Because there's nothing else which, which doesn't or which has, uh, there's nothing else which has a time value to it, right? Yeah. Which fundamentally means as more and more adoption of these two sort of say facets of uh, viewership get more and more enabled on digital platforms, that's when I think the, the I don't want to use the word death because I think we've used, used the word death of TV for the last about seven, eight years now. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Uh, but it, you know, yes, you will see a lot more people moving towards, um, I mean, cutting the cord really. I don't even want to call them TV versus um, uh, phone, but cutting the cords. I think that kind of tells you directionally, yes, more and more people will see on-demand content. But you know, given specifically our demographics and how people have been adopting both TV and uh, uh, you know digital, the journey is going to be very different. Interesting. Um, to you, I, my my question is actually a different, more beyond advertising, and maybe the marketers can chip in as well. Is on integration. Are brands coming to creative agencies with with more uh, you know bolder ideas of how they can integrate with uh, with online content? Uh, beyond just advertise on it because that's a market that's relatively unexplored. Maybe some some of the stuff that uh, the content creators on this side of the panel can add to as well. I'll tell you something uh, really strange, uh, completely anecdotal. There's no data to this. Uh, so we handle uh, amongst other clients, including DBS, uh, Bank actually. So uh, amongst others, we handle uh, this client called uh, Agon. And there was a campaign of theirs which they did almost exclusively on uh, digital, right? YouTube, essentially. Mm. Uh, the next campaign that we are doing, we actually decided, or the client actually decided, that the entire media is going to move to uh, television, broadcast television, HD channels. So I was like, how could you possibly be saying this? You're a purely digital brand. Why would you move away from a digital platform to something which is broadcast, the, the, the journey to actual purchase and all of that is much longer, and so on and so forth. So he says something really strange, which was, you know, Ashish Bhapena, uh, targeting bahut achha nahi hota, which actually blew my mind. What are you saying? You know, you're talking about the most targeted way of reaching people. That's the whole point of all of this. It's like because, you know, because of the way uh, people are getting data, which is roughly free. So right now, for the numbers, all lift men, all rickshaw guys, this, that, and the other are getting my content, and that's of absolutely no use to them. The moment I put it up on uh, HD, I know my audience, right? He's the guy who's going to buy it, even if his part to purchase a little bit longer. So all of those kind of things are happening. There is, you know, what, like you're saying, there is that set as well. Bolder, brighter, beautiful, shareable, uh, provocative kind of ideas, they're also happening. But this one, thankfully, hasn't yet gone away. I like interruptive advertising. I don't mind that at all. Uh, so I, I think both are uh, well in the right. Yeah. All right. In the I would want to actually yeah. add to this because it's a space close to my heart, which I'll call branded content in a way. I think it's going to be something again, and as I'm an agency to brands too, and luckily to a lot of content creator too, there's a huge urge amongst a lot of brands to get either integrated or create originals itself. So just to quote an example, brands like Harley Davidson, brands like BMW, a lot of sporting gears, etc., where there is a genre which surely exists where very high quality or that audience-based content can be created. The urge is high. That's the starting point. The gap is the content creators whether it's they, whether it's production houses, overall have interacted with brands only to a level in India where it's an in-film placement or an in-show placement. It's been a very, you can still say an unevolved space and it's just evolving. So branded content is going to and should because the other piece is money as we have to speak. Content creators also finally need monies. They might have the best of the ideas but each of it 
cannot be funded by OTT in coming time. There will be some very interesting content which might be created in collaboration. So Manish, let me, let me get a view of the two brands, let me put them on the spot. Would any time in the foreseeable future, let's look at a time span of two years, would you look at creating your own show? You know, maybe it could integrate all the Godrej uh, uh, brands into a women-centric, yeah, into a women-centric show. Right? Do you foresee that in next two years? Absolutely. There's a possibility. Absolutely. Okay. So, to very similar analogy to TV, yeah. uh, you know, ultimately, one communication does not work. Our country is very diverse. We have multiple cultures. We have, even within a single state, you have multiple regions and, you know, cultural regions, socio-cultural regions, so as to speak. So, what my experience has taught me is that it's so very important as a brand, you get a huge edge when you really tailor make content. And it could be not only just integration in a very plain fashion, but it could be specific tailor made content works brilliantly. That's our learning. And uh, from that perspective, OTT definitely offers that space and it's a very welcome opportunity. Akash, if you agree, disagree? Um, I mean, let me start by saying it's already happening. I mean, uh, you know, whether it's with TV or whether it's with OTT guys, there are enough and more examples where brands have already taken that route, right? I mean, in my previous life, one of the brands I used to manage was Maggie. We did something with Z on Maggie Kitchen Journeys, which was a show just designed for us, right? We obviously took it to uh, OTTs as well. It gave us results, right? That's one on the mass side. I and mean, I think I'm actually also